The second topic today that we're going to relate back to work is energy. So again, energy is a word that you guys have probably heard so many times in your life and you use it all the time, but in physics it might have a specific definition. So let's get to the definition. So energy in physics is actually defined in terms of work. So energy is the capacity that an object has of doing work. Capacity of an object of doing work. So you need energy to do work. And that's true in real life too. If you have no energy and you're feeling very tired, you don't have, um, you won't be able to do any work. So it's exactly the same thing in physics. Energy is the capacity of doing work. Now there are two basic types of energy. So there is potential energy, potential energy, and there is kinetic energy. So we're going to call potential energy PE, like physical education, and kinetic energy KE. Now what is each of these? So the definition of potential energy is energy that is stored and that has the capacity for doing work, but is not yet doing work. So potential energy is stored inside the body, stored and has capacity of doing work. And because work was done when there was motion, kinetic energy is energy that is already doing work. So kinetic energy is any energy of motion. So when there's motion and work is being done. Being done. So these are the two types of energies and they have um, many specific names. So for example, potential energy, one of the ones that we're gonna look at the most is called gravitational potential energy. Gravitational. So gravitational is what every object that is above the ground has. And that means that if I hold this marker up here, it has energy and it has gravitational potential energy. Why? Because if I let go, it's going to start moving. So it's going to be doing work. The force of gravity is going to do work as soon as I let go and it's going to start moving. So let's see what happens when I drop it. As we um, thought it would, the object started moving. So that means it had to have some energy stored inside it to be able to start moving as soon as I let go. So that's gravitational potential energy. Another potential energy is called elastic. So elastic potential energy is what happens when you have something that has elasticity. So you have a rubber, you have something to hold your hair with, you have um, gum, anything that when you stretch, uh, like a spring also when you stretch, if you let go, it's going to move back to its original position. So anything that is stable there, but as soon as something changes, it starts moving, that means it had to have some energy stored inside it. So that's elastic uh, potential energy. Another one is electric potential energy. So that's what our uh, systems have when we convert energy into light, when we turn on a light bulb, there had to be some electric potential energy stored inside it so that it could turn on um, when we needed it to. Um, there's also nuclear potential energy, which is what the nuclei of atoms have, and atomic potential energy, which allows us to create atomic and nuclear bombs when um, when we do something, when we break open the atom or when we break open the nucleus of an atom. So there has to be some energy stored, actually a huge amount of energy stored, so that an explosion can take place when we change the characteristics. And the, another example is chemical potential energy. So this is the one that we have inside our bodies that allow us to do work. So we eat, we take in food, we process it, and that gives us energy to maintain our bodies at body temperature, um, to do force, I can throw this 
uh, eraser because I have enough strength in me because I converted the energy of the uh, brownie that I ate yesterday into force that I can use and can kinetic energy that I can use. So these are just some types of potential energies, the most common of them all. And kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So basically anything that has motion. So one, something is moving at a speed different than zero, just any speed, it has kinetic energy. We'll see the specific equation of this next class, but right now you just need to know that if it's moving, doesn't matter at what speed, doesn't matter if it's accelerating or not, just moving at all, it has kinetic energy. And there are some kinetic energies that are about um, energy being lost to the surroundings. So um, heat is energy being lost to the surroundings, sound and light are energy that being lost. So this is energy loss. So for example, um, when friction does work and it's stopping things, you can ask yourself, where is the energy going? But if you, if you um, touch the surface, maybe it got hot. So maybe some of that potential energy that it had or some of the kinetic energy that it had converted into heat and that's why it's hot. Um, or maybe if you have a fire and you want to use its heat and you say, okay, but where did all of the energy convert to heat? Well, no, you can see it and the fire lights up. Um, so some of it went to light. And also when I uh, drop something and it makes a sound, sound is also energy. So these are just ways in which energy is lost to the surroundings um, or converted into other ways that we can't use. Because these energies we can use, the energy of motion we can use, but the energy of heat, sound, and light we generally can't use. So that's why we call it energy lost. So now what's the relationship between work and energy? So they have a very, very tight-knit relationship and that's why they use the same unit of joules and everything. So every time there is work done, every single time that there is work done, it means that energy, some energy transferred, um, changed form, energy changed form, energy changed form, always. This is a rule. There is no exception. So, for example, if you do work um, uh, to, to lift something, it's because I changed some of my chemical energy from my muscles that I had because of the food I ate this morning, I changed it from chemical energy to gravitational energy. So I lifted it. Now this, this um, marker has gravitational potential energy. Where did it get it from? Got it from my chemical energy and I had to do work for that energy transformation to happen. So that is in one direction. Every time there is work done, it's because energy changed form. And it also happens the other way around. Anytime energy changes form, energy changes form, work had to be done. Work was done. Yeah, so always, 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 if, if you have something moving and then suddenly that became electric energy and turned on a light, it means that that electric force had to do work. So a force is doing work somewhere if energy is transferred from one form to another, right? So actually the amount of work that you do is that same amount of energy that changed form. So this leads to something called the work energy theorem. Let's put it up here. So this is called the work energy theorem. And this theorem, um, which is sort of a rule because it always happened, it's not, it's not a theory, it's an actual rule, but it's called a theorem because it has proof and we're not going to prove it here, but this theorem is given as a mathematical equation. And that mathematical equation is written like this. W equals change in Ke. So this is a very important equation 
that is going to help you a lot to solve some problems later on. Um, so what this means is that the amount of work you do is equal to the energy, um, to, the, to the change in kinetic energy that an object had. So if an object has a kinetic energy of 5 joules, and later on it has a kinetic energy of um, 20 joules, so it went from 5 to 20 joules, we don't care how, we don't care why, but it changed kinetic energy from 5 to 20, it gained 15 joules of kinetic energy, that means that the work done on it by a force was 15 joules. That's what this equation means. There had to be 15 joules done of work to change the kinetic energy of the object from 5 to 20 joules. And it works backwards too. If you give something, if you apply, um, if you do a work of, of um, 3 joules on an object, and before it was still, it wasn't moving, it didn't have any kinetic energy, so it had a kinetic energy of 0 joules. Because you did 3 joules of work, after you do the work, the object is going to have 3 joules of kinetic energy. Every little bit of work that you put into the object, it's going to gain as kinetic energy at some point. So that's the work energy theorem, that all the work you put in uh, becomes kinetic energy, and all the change in kinetic energy is due to the work done. So it's basically um, an equation way to write these two statements that I put over here. And the final thing that I want to tell you guys is to remind you of the um, uh, law of conservation of energy. So I'm sure you've heard that before in science class or somewhere, in movies maybe, and it's called the law of conservation of energy. Law of conservation of energy. So we'll write it down so that you guys write it down in your notebooks too. And what it says is energy can't be created or destroyed, only transformed. Energy can't be created or destroyed, only transformed. So what that means is that from the very, very beginning of the universe in the Big Bang, or whatever happened before the Big Bang, there has been a total amount of energy that is constant. None of it has disappeared. It only changed form. So if before there was a lot of potential nuclear energy, now there is a lot of um, kinetic energy and elastic energy and electric energy. It keeps changing forms one way or another but it's never destroyed and it's never created. So there won't ever be more or less energy in the universe than what was at the beginning um, of, of life, of the universe itself. Um, so the, the, the way to write this in an equation is it's something called mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is constant. So constant is the important word here. And what is mechanical energy? You might be saying, I haven't said what mechanical energy is. So mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic and potential energies. So mechanical energy is kinetic energy, what you call Ke, plus potential energy, Pe. So if, if I had this marker here, um, and the only thing it has right now is gravitational potential energy. Maybe it has, I don't know, 20 joules of gravitational kinetic energy, uh, potential energy, sorry. And it's not moving, so kinetic energy is zero. So right now the marker has zero plus 20, which gives us a total mechanical energy of 20 joules. When I drop it, it's going to lose gravitational potential energy because it's not going to be that high up anymore. And at some point, it's going to um, reach the ground with its maximum velocity. So remember, its maximum velocity is right before it hits the ground. That speed is going to give it a kinetic energy. 
So because the mechanical energy is constant, this means this equation has always got to give 20 joules. At the beginning of the, of the um, road of the marker, and at the end and in the middle, it always has to equal 20. So at the end, when there's no more potential energy, that means that all of it has to have been converted to kinetic energy, right? So this is at the top, this is at the bottom. But at some other point, maybe at the middle of the journey, there was 10 of kinetic, and so there had to be 10 of potential to give the 20. So it's going to go through every one of these steps, but it's always going to equal the total of 20 joules of mechanical energy. So the law of conservation of energy doesn't apply to just kinetic, because as you see, kinetic changed from 0 to 10 to 20, or to just potential, because potential changed from 20 to 10 to 0. It only um, talks about the total energy or mechanical energy, which was always constant at 20 joules. So that is um, energy, work, and the work at energy.